A very, very blessed evening for me to you, my fellow pomegranates and gooseberries. Uh, I would hereby like to proceed to read you an essayistic observation that I happened to pen. Back in the year of our tantalising uh, Gorilla Cross Two Stroke Engine Tractor 2005. Now, this essayistic observation, uh, my fellow gooseberries and pomegranates, is entitled The Despicable Axe Murder in Height and Merseyside, and it's dedicated to the lovely family of uh, the tragic height and teenager Anthony Walker. As if Ken Bigley, Michael Shields and the 20th anniversary of the Heisel tragedy were not sufficiently distressing for the effervescent, quite curling in his character European capital of culture 2008, the city of Liverpool had to be befallen by a brutal, racially motivated axe murder in Highton. A half-decent heart of hearts breaks for the family of slain teenager Anthony Walker, who has become the victim of a slim minority of ostracised scallywags in the pool, who firmly believe that they should take it upon themselves to rescue the so-called whiteness of the population on this island. These low-life excuses for humanity have desecrated a human being's life who did them no harm. They just couldn't get over how a person of colour that is the antithesis to white could walk hand in hand with a gorgeous white dame in Highton. Therefore the imbeciles had to rectify the situation and slaughtered one of their own. Now the Walker family, who are devout Christians, have expressed forgiveness to these profane monsters who tried to strip their 18-year-old son of all his dignity in a totally barbaric way. Is that how we show patriotism in the wake of 7-7 and 21-7, I hereby ask? Is that how we'll contribute towards making England, England, a brighter spot for us all? No, me fellow outcast whites. This is sadly how we continue to justify the hatred for our very existence that is so widespread throughout the so-called Third World. This is when any person with a grain of morality can stand up and denounce this white behaviour. It is uncivilised and we whites have got to emphasise that point. No ifs, no buts. It is cardinally sick. And the perpetrators of this crime are sickness personified. And don't kid yourself. Their conduct is no more excusable than that of the terrorists who use jihad as their arguments for grilling humans like kebabs all over the capital. The heart and axe murder has left the right in a daze. The heart of the message radiating from the ferry across the Mersey lyricism has been uncompromisingly butchered by political slavery manifesting itself in disastrous emotions that have cut very short the life of a budding gent. It is not a moment for calm at all. It is a moment for assertion. We have to ostracise bigots and extremists of that ilk, irrespective of allegiance, be it Al-Qaeda, her white nationalism. No amount of stereotyping and quest for justification of narrow-minded inflated hatred for our fellow man will bring back those who perished on 7-7. And none of that will cure the illness that is torturing our society. It will deepen it. No, naivety will not be the answer and tough and resolute we have to be, but fairness has always been a hallmark of this great society of ours, which through literature as well as magnificent heritage sites has given us plenty to be proud of. And the resolve of our amazing society was summarised by Anthony Walker's grieving family, who with their dignity intact were credit to the nation and their community as they articulated their words on Sky News. One is not still certain how many would have had the strength to behave in that manner, especially so soon after their beloved offspring had been so senselessly snuffed out. The author can point out... Oh. <coughs> 